clouds. Such sunshine and such passionate enthusiasm immediately suggest Italy. The scene is being set for the fantastic Mille Miglia, the thousand mile long motor race. The people of Brescia regard this as their race and mean to see every minute of it and the preparations. And the officials are equally determined to keep the scrutineering bay clear. In charge is the director of the race, Renzo Castagnetto, who, together with the late Franco Mazzotti, Giovanni Canestrini, and Count Maggi, conceived this great project. A motor race round Italy, a thousand miles long, starting and finishing at Brescia. <laughs> competition cars is a considerable industry. Here we see the Oscar factory at Bologna. The Maserati factory is close by. And most famous of them all, the Scuderia Ferrari at Maranello. The final touches are being made to Mike Hawthorne's cars. He's joined by Tom Cole, who so tragically met his death later in the year at Le Mans. Always very much in command, Enzo Ferrari, the man who has built the winning cars for the last five Mille Miglia. From miles around, people have come to Maranello to see the Ferraris for this year's race on test. And here's Villarese himself giving a typical explanation. Romeo's in Milan, they look on racing as part of the job of developing cars and engines for ordinary use. So the engine designer works closely with the two chief testers, Sanesi and Zanardi. Zanardi is taking their new Mille Miglia car off to Monza racetrack for a final test. The car has been prepared in great secrecy, for here is one of the greatest threats to Ferrari. The new Alfa is not only much smaller than the fast production saloon, but it's fitted with an engine of nearly twice the size. On another track, at Modena, one of many privately owned Ferraris is under test. Closed cars can have far better streamlining than open ones. And as it's poured with rain during every Mille Miglia since the war as well, many drivers prefer them. But some prefer an open car, like Giannino Mazzotto, brilliant and serious-minded driver, just taking delivery of one of the latest 4.1 Ferrari. They say it'll reach 186 miles an hour. And what better place to find out than the street outside the showroom? Beneath the peaceful chapel of San Stefano, the Aston Martin team look over their cars. This is Colino, where for years the home of Count Maggi has had ever open doors for the drivers from abroad. Men like Reg Parnell, who's come from England to challenge the years of Italian supremacy in the Mille Miglia. Over 500 cars have been entered for this year's race, with the astonishing number of 1,000 drivers and co-drivers. The cars will start one at a time, and all that matters is getting around that 1,000 miles and back to Brescia in the shortest time. And so that people will know just when each car started, the smallest cars, which start first, are numbered 1 to 90. The numbers themselves of the others show their starting time. 518 on Casella's Gordini means that he will leave at 18 minutes past 5, whilst 3.40 is the time set for Venetian's Oscar. Though the officials haven't enough to cope with, somebody has to lock his car and go off with the key. The Mille Emilia isn't an easy race to follow because so many things happen at once. But from all this confusion, the main race, the battle for the prize for the fastest car to cover the thousand miles, will sort itself out. And there are other prizes too. All the cars are divided into classes with prizes for each class. 
said that at the same time as the main race, there are a number of very close fights for the class prizes. There are four touring classes, 750cc, 1100cc, under two litre, and over two litre. Four classes for standard production cars. Then there are four sports classes, 750cc, 1300cc, under two litre and over two litre. That is four classes for outright sports cars. But most interest centres on the leading drivers, those with the skill and experience to be outright winner. From the USA comes John Fitch. Britain Sterling Moss isn't sure which of all the free gifts you drink and which you clean your clothes with. Jean Hirteau from France is a bottle of Italian brandy and a British Jaguar. So is Tony Rolt, one of the few really calm people left in the whole of Brescia. Franco Cortese from Milan tries to look equally English in his tweed jacket and cap. And here's one of the very special Lanciers, already being praised, photographed and discussed. Clearly, the inboard front brakes will reduce the unsprung weight considerably. The Lancia drivers include Biondetti, the Wolf of Tuscany, already part of the folklore of Italy, four times winner of the Mille Miglia and the author of many famous proverbs of the race. And here's Bonetto, a courageous and versatile driver of sports and racing cars. And the calculating and conscientious Taruffi. Now the public can see the new Alfa Romeo for the first time. Here's Alfa's finest driver, Fangio, with Gordini, the French designer, on his right. Fangio won the World Championship for Alfa in 1951. He's not only got the qualities for a champion, skill, courage and intelligence, he has genius. Fangio was strongly supported by Kling, the greatest German driver of today, and Sonezi, Alfa's brilliant chief tester. No factory except Ferrari has ever produced such a varied range of cars in one race. Nearly every one different, but each an example of perfect craftsmanship. The Ferrari team manager, Ugolini, speaks to Cacciari. One of our film units will be his co-driver. The cinema is going to be well represented. But here's Roberto Rossellini, one of Italy's famous film directors. And this is last year's winner, Bracco, whose inspired driving so often seems to stray over that thin line between genius and madness. Paolo Mazzotto is not only following his elder brother Giannino by driving a Ferrari, but already biting at his heels. Farina, who is accompanied by his faithful mechanic Parenti, and Villarese will be the backbone of the Ferrari attack. And here's Tom Cole, the Ferrari driver from the USA. surveys the final preparation of his cars, he can feel some confidence in tomorrow. For among his drivers, he sees the winner of the 1950 Mille Emilia, Giannino Mazzotto. The winner of 1951, Gigi Villarese. And last year's winner, Giannino Bracco. But it will be no easy win. And all round Brescia, cars are getting their last touches. For in a few hours, the 20th Mille Emilia, the Mille Miglia of 1953 will have started. Towards nine o'clock, the tension begins to mount. The flag of Brescia is raised. And off goes the Fiat Topolino. At half-minute intervals, the rest of the 750cc touring class will follow, setting off east towards the Adriatic. And now it's time for the 750cc sports cars. The starting ramp is to let people who paid for seats see the cars. The police would admit that they can't keep the road clear with such an enthusiastic crowd. These and the 
larger cars leave at one minute intervals. Hour after hour, one car after another moves off across Italy and down towards Ravenna. Cars have been pouring into the control since midnight. A card is carried on each car and the driver must stop and get it stamped before he leaves. Back at Brescia, the 1100cc sports cars are leaving. It's nearly 3.40, time for Venetian to start in his Oscar. By tradition, Castagnetto wears the bowler hat he wore to start the first Mille Emilia in 1927. Sports class has a great variety of cars. Here's an Alfa Romeo with a special Swiss body. And just before four minutes past five, Cortese's Fiat V8 arrives. Just seven minutes ahead of Musso's two-liter Maserati. And here's our car, Cacciari's two-liter Ferrari. And this is Ali Khan's Alfa with Zen there driving. By now, over 400 cars are in the race, and down the coast they go to Pescara. From Pescara they turn west through the mountain villages of the Abruzzi. Beyond Aquila they climb up to the Cella di Corna. John Fitch, the American entry in the Nash Healy, is the first of the unlimited sports class, the fastest class of all. Two minutes behind is Sterling Moss in his Jaguar. The team manager of Mercedes, Neubauer, is here just to watch. Paolo Manzotto's off. Rossellini is exactly half an hour behind our Ferrari, but his has the larger three-litre engine. And here's one of Lancia's, Anselmi's. And now one of the great Ferrari hopes, Giannino Mazzotta. And as Peter Collins' Aston leaves, Johnny Lockett arrives with his Austin Healy. The mayor of Brescia starts Fangio's Alpha. And it's Neubauer starting Kling. Tom Cole, the American driver, leaves in his Ferrari. And just behind him is last year's winner, Bracco. Aston Martin is leaving with Villarese, 1951, when I close behind. Farina in another works Ferrari. Biondetti in his new Lancia. Jean Herteau in his Jaguar. And Mike Hawthorne, driving for Ferrari in his first Mille Miglia. As the last cars leave, the people of Brescia go home to rest. While 300 miles further on at Ravenna, the Porsches are checking in. There are nearly two dozen of these fast German saloons. Many stop here to refuel. There's 200 miles to the next control at Pescara. Already there are several outstanding class performances. Palmieri in the 2-litre Touring. Venetian in the 1100cc Sports. Thirty miles ahead in the mountains is Popoli, with its so-called level crossing. Special flags are used to warn drivers. There are far too many hazards for anyone to learn them all. Unexpected corners, narrow bridges, level crossings that may be closed, and optimistic sympathizers encouraging everyone to go faster. 
Another 30 miles to the control at Aquila, where the card must be stamped for the third time. And it's easy to make a mistake when you've been up all night. The highest point on this part of the circuit, 3,000 feet up, and there is a surprise for everyone this year. It isn't raining. The route descends through the mountain down to Rome. The morning mist is still clinging when the first 750 touring cars arrive. A French Dina Pennard is fastest. A modified Dina Pennard, a DB, leads the 750 sports cars. With only seconds between them, the cars in both 750 classes are pouring into the control. From Rome, the cars head back up north. signs of Emilia Emilia. Viva Oscar, Viva the Drivers, and Viva Alfa Romeo, and sometimes still faintly visible, Viva Nuvolare. On up north race the small cars. Most are going well, but some are in trouble. Others look as if they've been out in the holiday traffic between Rome and the sea. Near the top of the Radicophony Pass, crowds have been waiting since early morning for the first cars to arrive. And it's number six. Provasso's French Dina Panard. An ordinary saloon with a tiny 750cc engine. Third at Rome with barely one minute between the first three cars in the 750 touring class. Closing up is the leader of the fastest 750 sports class, Tuzon Persion in the DB. The Dina Pannard seemed to be swamping all opposition, but here's 82, the baby Renault of Angelelli, taking the lead. Ravenna, and here's Giannina Mazzotto. The Ferrari has broken every record with an average speed of well over 100 miles an hour for the first 180 miles. Peter Collins, Mike Keane and their Aston Martin are being refueled. Fast enough to be well in the picture. Fangio with the first of the new Alphas, a little slower than Marzotto's Ferrari. Kling, a fraction faster than Fangio. And it is an Alpha driven by Sanesi that is fastest to Ravenna, with a Ferrari driven by Farina in second place. Bracco, seven and a half minutes slower than Sanesi's Alpha gives strong Ferrari support. Rossellini is going steadily, although Tom Cole is about to pass him. He's about 15 minutes behind the leaders. Although the Aston Martin is stationary, the experienced Parnell isn't wasting a second. The pace is telling. All around the circuit there are cars in trouble, and many of the fastest cars are already out. Hawthorne, Johnson, Moss, Taruffi. Villarese and Wisdom, all over a time. At Pescara, some of the two-litre sports cars are now refueling. One of the new Maseratis, driven by Musso, is setting a terrific pace and already leads its class by seven minutes. Now Cortese looks a little less English on this Sunday morning. 60 miles on, Aquila, and the Oscars lead in the 1100 sports class. There's 20 minutes between the Venetians leading Oscar and the Fiat Armini of Brandy. Rome, and an Alfa Romeo saloon is the first of the two-litre touring class to arrive. There were 185 cars in this class alone. 185 moderate-sized saloon cars having a magnificent race amongst themselves. Stagnoli started at 2.30, long after anyone who has reached Rome so far. But there's no time to lose, for Palmieri, who left at 3.22, is racing through the field. 
and putting up the fastest time of the whole class. In the 1300 towing class, there are 120 of these little Fiat 1100 saloons. Another evenly matched struggle between ordinary saloon cars with a premium on driving skill. Here are the Mancinis, who led the whole way and won by just 15 seconds from Serena and Piccolo in a similar Fiat 1100. Cars with a top speed of little more than 80, which average over 65 for the whole thousand miles. The castle of Radicophony and the old customs houses between the Vatican States and Tuscany are left behind as the route goes on to Siena. 140 miles from Rome, Siena, with its 13th century cathedral where Richard Wagner composed, now echoes to a different sound. big part in running the race and wave the little cars on as they leave for the north but now the unlimited sports the fastest cars of all are arriving at Pescara all records fly as Giannino Mazzotto's Ferrari is checked in and here's the first of the Alphas just 31 seconds faster than the Ferrari another Alpha cling even faster than Fangio by 47 seconds Ferrari is five minutes faster still, Farina. Fastest British car, Peter Collins Aston. Fastest of all, Sanese's Alpha, nearly five minutes faster than Farina, a new record of 109 miles an hour from Brescia to Pescara. Another Ferrari, Tom Cole. He's going to refuel. Reg Parnell, all British hopes of a place now rest on the Aston Martins. For Tony Rhodes' car, the last of the Jaguars is out. The two-litre sports cars have reached Aquila, and it is now a complete triumph for the new Maseratis, with Musso in first place. And not far behind is Mantovani. Giletti eventually won the class at an average of over 80 for the whole race. Two litres are now being caught up by the fastest cars. Sanesi is out, but Alphas still lead. Fanjo's in second place. And just behind is Kling, fastest of all by 50 seconds. Bracco is now fourth. And this is our Ferrari with the Aston of George Abacassis just behind. Paul Freire's Chrysler leads the unlimited touring cars at Rome, and its vast comfort spreads an air of leisure over the control. Yes, it is Ingrid Bergman waiting for Rossellini. Nearly 100 miles beyond Rome, the battle for the two-litre touring class is on. Stagnoni's Alpha in second place. Faster than any comes Palmieri. And 20 minutes behind is Pagliari, the eventual winner. And here's Stanioli, being passed by a Fiat 1100. But the Alpha gets off again to finish second. The outstanding performance was put up by Palmieri, for he led the largest class by nearly half an hour, only to have the car put out by mechanical trouble on the very last stage. On goes the race with hundreds and hundreds of different cars of all sorts and sizes battling it out all over Italy. The smallest cars now reaching up from Siena to Florence. French cars are leading in both the sports and towing classes as they leave on the next 65 mile stretch to Bologna. with the oldest university in Europe and famed for its good living. The winner of the 750 towing class is here, a baby Renault. A Fiat makes an heroic effort to finish. And this is the last control before Brescia, and many cars have a final fill-up and check-over.
last 140 miles form one of the fastest sections of the whole circuit and lead back across the plains of Lombardy to Brescia. We're all awaiting for the first car to arrive. And way ahead of every other car, by nearly half an hour, comes a little French DB, Dina Panna. Persian and Tusa have driven for over 14 hours and averaged 66 miles an hour. Adina Panar's saloon is the first of the 750 touring cars to arrive, but Angelelli's Renault won the class. And he has the battered Fiat, not only finishing, but in sixth place. The crowds at Rome wait as the battle for outright victory draws closer. <laughs> The Ferrari of Giannino Mazzotto has covered the first 500 miles at over 95 miles an hour. It's difficult for an early starter to know if he's going fast enough to hold the cars behind him. But Giannino knows that he will need everything to get the lead from the Alphas. Another Ferrari. It's Paolo Mazzotto. The Alphas still lead. Fangio has gained three minutes more over Giannino's Ferrari. And as Fangio pulls up to the Alpha pits to refuel, another Alpha arrives. Cling is fastest of all by 40 seconds. Alphas are first and second at Rome. Here's Fangio, but it is Kling who leads, trying for the second year running to disprove beyond it his proverb. He who leads at Rome can never win the Mille Miglia at Brescia. Somebody's been trying. It's Peter Collins. Another Ferrari. Bracco is fourth. Bracco is now heading towards the mountains where last year he took the lead to win. A new Lancia, Veneto, fifth. Barnell, delayed by some straw bales, but that hasn't stopped him. He and Collins are now both in the first ten. And here's our Ferrari, still ahead of Rossellini's. Another Aston with George Abacassis is just two and a half minutes faster than Biondetti's Lancia. Rossellini has arrived. Rossellini retires at Rome, but we head north. All the way, the crowds line the road as we try to steady our camera against the bumps. And here's a lorry. And that's George Abacassis. It may take pluck to drive in the Mille Miglia, but that seems nothing to the pluck shown by many thousands of spectators. Biondetti says, it is necessary to have the courage to drive slowly. Here is Biondetti. But perhaps he doesn't include himself. We've been having a private race with this Nardi since early this morning. But it is the fight between the Alphas and the Ferraris for outright victory on which all attention is now focused. The Alfa Romeo Fangio leads. Kling is out and Fangio has taken his place. The fastest car still in the race has now nearly caught up with the Ferrari of Paolo Mazzotto, which left Brescia 19 minutes before the Alfa and is now less than two minutes ahead. 17 minutes have been lost, but his speed is high enough to make Paolo one of the best remaining Ferrari hopes of a win. For anything can happen to the leaders in this race, and there are nearly 300 miles yet to go. And here comes the leading Ferrari, Giannino Mazzotto, now in second place. His brother Paolo's Ferrari is just behind. Fangio's Alfa, still fastest of all. The Ferrari is climbing the Radicophony. Giannino Mazzotto knows the mountains of his own country better than Fangio, so he has a chance to make up part of those vital four minutes. The four minutes the Ferrari was behind the Alfa at Rome. Paolo Mazzotto is now up in third place with his Ferrari. The Alfa Romeo is here. Fangio using all his skill to make up for his lack of intimate knowledge of the roads. Fangio's trying hard, but he won't know if he's going fast enough to hold his four-minute lead until he arrives at Siena Control. Mm -hmm. 
Panetto is proving that the new Lancia is a fine car and it's up in fourth place. Another Ferrari is coming through the field. Tom Cole has passed Peter Collins. Something must have happened. The Aston Martin was up in seventh place and has now lost some 20 minutes. A bad blow to British hopes. More at home in the mountains than any other driver, Biondetti, still holder of the record for the Futa crossing. And now let's get up to the next control point at Siena. The Ferraris of Giannino and Paolo Mazzotto have checked out before the Alfa arrives. And Fangio's lead has been cut from four minutes to less than two. There is less than two minutes between the Alfa and the Ferrari. Bonetta is holding fourth place for the Lancia. Parnell's Aston and Biondetti not far behind. And there's George Abacassis, Aston. One of the many standard Lancia Aurelia saloons is leaving Siena and moving on across the hills towards Florence. There's little chance to relax on this section, even if you've been up most of the night, for it is only too easy to go into one of these corners too fast. And on the other hand, if you get too cautious, you lose seconds that soon pile up into minutes. the Ferrari is reaching Florence control. A wonderful drive, but has Giannino made up those two more minutes? No, the Alphas answered the challenge, gaining four seconds more lead and passing Paolo. Poor Musso. Bonetto leaves, still fourth. Peter Collins stands little chance now of making up that last 20 minutes. Tough luck after a brilliant early drive. And here's a surprise, Reg Parnell. His Aston has come right up into sixth place, passing Tom Cole. But Tom gets away first. Beyond Florence is the Futa Pass over the Apennines, the last great obstacle before Bologna. And close behind Alancia comes the Ferrari. The last chance for Giannino Mazzotta to use his knowledge of the mountains to gain those two vital minutes. Fangio also knows there's not a second to spare if the Alpha is to stay in first place. Bologna and the Ferrari has broken the record for crossing the Futa, a record that has stood since Biondetti made it in 1938. But there's no time to spare, and Giannino waves to his pit as he pulls up to refuel for the last time. But the Alpha's not here, and the two minutes are nearly up. And the Ferrari leads. And it's the Alpha. Fangio's had trouble with the steering and has now dropped three minutes behind the Ferrari. Can he make up the three minutes? More important, is it safe to go on? Fangio is continuing the race. And here's Paolo Mazzotto. His third place looks certain, but soon after this, the car caught fire and was completely burnt out. And away goes Vanessa. The throttle control is gone, and Reg Parnell has fixed it wide open and is driving on the ignition switch. And the news has come through to Brescia that the Ferrari now leads. And here comes Giannino Mazzotto to win the 20th Mille Emilia. And there's news of the Alpha. It's passed through Piacenza to tremendous speed, but people say the car appears to be steering with only one wheel, and it's starting to rain. And here he is, the Alpha, less than 12 minutes behind Mazzotto. Bonetto brings his Lancia in third. Tom Cole's Ferrari, fourth. And here's Reg Parnell's Aston, fifth. 
Biondetti has stopped just two and a half miles from the finish. What cruel luck. Paul Freyer Chrysler wins the unlimited touring. But here is Biondetti. He and his mechanic have pushed the car two and a half miles, much of it uphill. As the Lancia crosses the line to gain a well-deserved eighth place, a new proverb of the Mille Emilia is created. Not by Biondetti this time, but about him. The heart is more important than the engine. The Countess Maggi gives flowers to Reg Parnell as the well-deserved congratulations continue. Francia may not have won, but it's taken more than genius for him to finish in second place. To drive from Bologna with faulty steering at a speed only slightly slower than the winners took great courage. Full honor to Giannino Mazzotta, winner of the 20th Mille Emilia. He, above all, has proved both his courage and skill. For it is a terrific thing to win, when even to finish the Mille Emilia is something of which any driver can be proud.